Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Today we're checking out the 59 Les Paul Standard from Epiphone. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Well, as soon as I learned that Epiphone was going to be releasing a 1959 Les Paul tribute guitar, I ordered one immediately. Now, unfortunately, here in Canada, they were seriously backordered, but it arrived this week. Normally, I like to play on a guitar about a month before I demo it, but I'm very familiar with both Gibson and Epiphone Les Pauls. So here we are. Let's take a look at the 59 standard. So what exactly is so special about a 1959 Les Paul and why is Epiphone making a tribute version? Well, great question. I'll try to sum it up in a few short sentences. When Gibson introduced this guitar in the 50s, it was a bomb. Nobody wanted to play it for the styles of music they were playing at the time and they sold very few of them. So what did Gibson do to remedy this? They did what Gibson does best. They made a more expensive guitar enter the 1959. And of course, they didn't sell well at all, and by 1960, they were out of production. So back to the question, what made the 59 so special? Well, it was the first year that all the elements of the Les Paul standard came together in one guitar. So stop tailpiece, tunematic bridge, humbucking pickups, uh, but mainly it had a burst finish with a flame top. It's the first year that all of those elements came together in one guitar, and that's why it's so legendary. Now today, of course, it's scarcity that continues to drive the 59 legend. Some of them were great, some of them were not. Either way, good on you, they're worth like $500,000. So if you got a good one, great. If you got a bad one, also great. <laughs> now, since most of us will never even touch a 59, enter Epiphone. We've got the 59 tribute, so let's check it out, see if it's any good. Here we go. Now, according to Epiphone, they worked very closely with the Gibson Custom Shop to create a copy that was as close as humanly possible, given the price constraints. Of course, this is an Epiphone, so it is $7.99. Um, so you're not going to get like Gibson Les Paul standard features. Of course, you have to bear that in mind. But we do have mahogany neck, mahogany body, maple top with a flame maple veneer. And this is in aged dark burst and I think it looks very beautiful. Um, it does have a satin finish over the entire guitar, including the back of the neck, so I like that. It's not quite as sticky as a high gloss neck, um, but the satin finish is just so that it looks aged. <laughs> so whether or not you, you think that looks authentic, uh, it does look different than a high gloss finish for sure, even under the lights. Um, and I think it is quite attractive. It does look a little vintage-y. Um, whether you like that or not is kind of up to you. Now, beyond that, um, we've got the long tannin neck joint, which again is sort of like a, <laughs> a feature that no one knows if it actually helps or not, but it's the way it used to be. So there you go. Uh, so the, the heel of the neck joint just goes deeper into the body, gets glued there, and is supposedly maybe better for resonance or something like that. And a standard tannin would maybe be here. And of course, all the Les Paul standards that we've known and love over the years have been short tannin, so I think uh, either way is fine, but since this is a traditional kind of rendition of that guitar, you do get the long uh, neck tenon joint. So that's cool. Uh, of course, uh, Gibson humbuckers, very cool, burst bucker two and three, I believe. Uh, Switchcraft switch, CTS pots, 50s style wiring. So, I mean, they went pretty pretty hardcore on this model for an Epiphone. And I really like the, the little emblem here on the back of the switch cover. Kind of just harkens back to Epiphone's own history. They have a rich history. They were making instruments before Gibson was even a company. So I like that they kind of acknowledge that there. Really nice touch. Now, beyond all that, we get Epiphone's brand new headstock shape, which I think looks great. We also get Epiphone Deluxe tuning machines, which are pretty much a direct copy of Gibson Deluxe. So, so far, so good, but we'll see over time how these guys uh, stack up. We also get a Graph Tech nut. Really important on a design like this, which is more traditional, to keep the strings from binding in there. It's going to help keep this whole thing in tune. Fretwork is a little narrower than my other standard, about the same uh, height but the frets are just a little bit narrower. So more kind of vintage correct. Um, still very, very playable for sure, as you guys will soon see. And the neck profile here, 
definitely a little chunkier than my uh, other Epiphone standard, which is more of like that D shape. This one has definitely a lot more on either side of the shoulders. Not super thick this way, but definitely more, you know, kind of in that shoulder area. Uh, some people say uh, this is more like a 58 neck. And uh, the Eastman 59, which is the closest copy I've ever played uh, to a 59, definitely had more of that uh, kind of V shape, which most people say the 59s were like. So there you guys go. I think it's time to plug it in and see what it sounds like. Alright you guys, now let's see how this guitar sits in a mix. I'm going to jam over a backing track. Link to the track is in the video description below as always. It's time for the one minute solo. Now let's talk a little bit about the overall construction and to compare I've got my other Epiphone here. This is the limited edition Root Beer Burst Les Paul Standard um, and of course I'll just show you guys the difference between uh, the finishes here. I'll just try to move them around in the light. Satin versus high gloss just so you can see uh, the difference in the Epiphone finishes there. And of course the neck profile slightly different. Uh, the D on the standard here and a little bit beefier as I mentioned on the 59 but very similar guitars, they weigh about the same. Uh, they feel very similar to play. Like I said, the frets on the standard are a little wider, a little narrower here. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of how it compares 
visually to uh, the other Epiphone. And I can't really say that the 59 is built any better than any Epiphone standard. I think the money does go into the pickups, Gibson pickups, Switchcraft, CTS, that kind of thing. And of course the proprietary finish and all that. So I think that's where the money goes and uh, you know really does help to upgrade this guitar. Now in terms of overall construction, really nice. The nut is cut well, give you a shot of that. Another thing here is how the posts go in and how the bridge goes in. Just beautiful. No tilting, no gap, nothing. Just built very, very tight. Now you don't get the Nashville style bridge here, um, but it is very, very solid. So the only thing I really noticed on this guitar were the frets were actually pretty gritty. You guys know I do a whole series on affordable guitars, and this is something that usually kind of plagues those. And you can polish them out, you can play them in, all that grittiness is going to go away, but it just shows that the tops of the frets were not really well polished. So, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that, but you know, all the frets, even after playing the solo and stuff, pretty gritty, you know? So I would like to see on a guitar of this price range, all of that polished out before it reaches the consumer. Now, as I mentioned, that's all gonna play out or I can pull the strings off and buff them out. So not a huge uh, deal, but it was something that I did notice. So I would say overall, this guitar is not really, you know, better built than any other Les Paul standard from Epiphone. But like I said, that extra money goes uh, into great pots, great pickups, you know, great switches. Um, and a, just a really nice build quality overall. So there you guys go. So here are my final thoughts on the Epiphone 1959 Les Paul Standard. Is this a compelling package? Well, I think for the Les Paul buyer, it is. I think a lot of people are gonna buy this guitar for two reasons. I think people buy Les Pauls for the history and for the tone. I don't think you necessarily buy it for, you know, the ergonomics or the playability. You buy it for the history and the tone and on both accounts, this guitar I think really succeeds. Uh, History-wise, it's got Gibson's, you know, seal of approval, <laughs> if that matters to you. Um, they gave this guitar the blessing and they gave the specs for this guitar. So, I mean, you're gonna get pretty close. And secondly, the, uh, the tone, the Gibson uh, Burst Bucker two and three pickups definitely has that, you know, thick, sustainy, creamy tone and that biting, uh, you know, just iconic rock tone. So I think on both accounts, this guitar succeeds, even gives a, a little touch of Epiphone history there. I should mention it comes with a beautiful case as well, just kind of very vintage, kind of brushed uh, nickel latches on it, and of course the bright pink inside. So it does come also with a very beautiful case, which most Epiphones don't. So when you add that into the price with, you know, CTS, Switchcraft, Gibson pickups, you know, traditional, construction and all that. Um, I think a lot of people are going to uh, really resonate with this guitar. And overall, I think it's a really nice guitar. Uh, hopefully in the future, I will do a shootout between maybe this Chinese guitar, uh, my Japanese made Epiphone and a Gibson Les Paul. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the video description below. But there you guys go. Just a brief look at this guitar. Hope you guys enjoyed the demo. Take care.